Welcome to the Motormouth YouTube channel. I'm Zach. I'm Andrea. And we do full-length car reviews twice a week. And halfway through, we stop for a segment called Questions, Coffee, and Cars. Yeah. So we decided to make it a standalone segment. And here we are at episode 17. How do you play along? Well, you follow along on Instagram at motormouth underscore Andrea. Every Sunday, I put a post out in the morning. Only stays up for a short time. Put your question in. Once we have all of our questions for the show, the post is deleted. All right. Let's go. Time now for questions, coffee, and cars. Your questions from Instagram. Do you think car manufacturers have ever made a mistake for not selling a certain car in a certain market? Oh, there's loads of cars we wish we could get. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it comes down to regulatory issues. The car doesn't uh, comply with North American crash safety, worthiness, and yeah. all those sorts of things. Engine I, choices. I think one of the biggies that people are disappointed in uh, is the Mazda CX-60. I still get asked questions about that. When are you going to review it? Well, we're not because it's not coming to North America. And then I also think some plug-in hybrids as well, especially from Volkswagen that are available in Europe, but oh, not here. But it's funny you mentioned Volkswagen because they have a long list of cars they make in other markets that yeah. we're dying to get. Like how about a Golf R wagon? How about the Amarok pickup truck that people have been dying to get their hands on yeah. here? Uh, what about the T-Rock? Yeah, I mean, lots. Hey, there's lots and lots. And uh, there's the, the GDI they still sell in Europe, which is the diesel GTI. Yeah, we could go on and on. Yeah. Any thoughts on creating a podcast? Yeah, we have talked about you're, that, you're, haven't you're, we? You're living it right now. So um, a viewer actually made a pretty good suggestion. We just have to get around to doing it and creating the podcast. But for us to upload all of these into a podcast. Would you listen or are you just going to see the thing is like I know podcasts are a real big deal and lots of people listen to them so when I walk the dog because mm -hmm. he's old and very very slow I actually listen to YouTube videos mm. so you could listen to this with your earbuds you could. And you don't get to see how fabulous I look. <laughs> a viewer said he listens on his way home. So he's not even looking at us. He's just got it through his Bluetooth. Stereo, yeah. yeah. So there you Which go. Which is a really good idea. He so, says he feels right at home, like he's hanging with us. All right. So what do you think of that? Should we do the podcast? I've yeah, been saying let us to Andrea know. we should do uh, like a dedicated podcast once a week. Gosh. Just sitting, drinking coffee. But get, I guarantee you, if we called it Questions, Coffee, and Cars, they tune in, Andrea. I'm sure they <laughs> would uh great guys keep them coming question why is zach almost always wearing earphones every time he is testing the back seat of a vehicle listening to tunes or a director yeah he's i'm directing him. <laughs> there's oh, no director you're looking at the whole motor mouth team right here there's it's nobody else us. it's just us that's it okay so we do the, it all the way it works is that um Andrea, of course, needs to drive the car by the camera. So I'm behind the camera. Andrea is driving the car. Yeah. And then car to car, we use this car, which is our Porsche Cayenne, to shoot the car um, driving in the next lane. But when I'm when I'm doing uh, shooting out the car, we call it, mm -hmm. the exterior shots, the interior shots, all the details of the dash, and then, of course, the beautiful back seat shot, mm -hmm. I am on my own. Andrea yeah. doesn't need to come for that. No. So I do exactly what I just said. I play a podcast video style through my earbuds yeah that's so good i mean all keeps them busy stuff. right mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. wondering how you and zach rate driver assistance technology oh. i hear some manufacturers are better than others certainly super oh, i thought you I wanted find... me to rate them how i like them no 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 just oh, okay. in, in general you know one of um one of them that I don't love is lane keep assist. Ugh. Some are harsher than others, but sometimes you really get pushed into the lane quickly and you're a little bit startled. And some forward collision yeah, really warning aggressive. is pretty harsh. You can change the settings mm -hmm. though. I'm like I know Honda's pretty aggressive with their forward collision warning and you can turn it down a little bit. First thing I do is if it's on the lane keep assist, I switch it off yeah. because driving, nobody drives perfectly right in the middle of the lanes. Like no. you're always managing moving in and out so mm -hmm. the ones that jerk your I don't like those I hate them actually Subaru is quite sensitive mm -hmm. I think Toyota is pretty good I really like blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert never really use a head-up display I think everybody's different I really think you have to try them and uh, 
and experience them. One brand that is particularly good is the Hyundai Group, so Kia, Hyundai, and Genesis for um, tracing the lane when you have cruise control on, yeah. so the sort of semi-autonomous cruise control. So it's doing the work. You just have to keep your hands on the wheel. Their system is really good. Yeah, really good. Recommendations for first-time car buyers in Canada for a family of three with a baby. Category being subcompact SUV or spacious sedan. Anything else you would recommend? What I'd like to know is how much they want to spend. You know what? I, it's funny because I think that um, if you could get one, I think the Corolla Cross Hybrid would be perfect for a, a, a young family trying to save money on gas because you need all the money you can get. Yeah. And then room for strollers and all that. Do you know which one I really liked? We haven't driven it yet. Is the new Kona. Mm -hmm. We were at the New York Auto Show, we were? I think, or Toronto Auto New Show. New Any, York. I think, yeah. New York, and, baby. Anyway, I couldn't believe the space and the comfort level in that. I really liked it a lot. Of course, we have to drive it first. If you're looking for something a little bit more spacious in the subcompact class, the Volkswagen Taos. Yes, I was going to say the Taos. also a good one. Yes, but I think the Corolla Cross, especially for saving money on yeah. fuel, is, is but you're, gonna, you're never going to be able to get one. But a sedan you might be able to oh, get. Yeah. Uh, and sedans are really spacious in the rear seat. There's a lot of good options from the Civic. The Corolla, again, you can get the hybrid now yeah. with the e all-wheel drive system. Even like the Sentra. I've always enjoyed having something different as my daily driver. An immediate benefit is quickly finding my car at Costco. That is helpful. For instance, I've had cars from Fiat, Jaguar, Volvo, and even Peugeot. What car or crossover would you recommend as a daily driver for someone seeking that road less traveled? Alfa Romeo, baby. Mm -hmm. That's uh, what I would choose. Same. I would either get the Giulia or the Stelvio. You really don't see many on the road, especially here in Vancouver. BMWs, Mercedes-Benz, Porsche, they rule Tesla, the road. dime a dozen here. So for sure, Alfa Romeo. Yeah, it's such a great handling car. It is so comfortable. Mm -hmm. Both of them, is, they're both comfortable. It isn't the most up-to-date when it comes to in-dash technology, but no. it, it does the job. And man, once you've driven one of those, the thing about Alfa Romeo is you will never get it unless you drive one. My wife wants a sporty two-row SUV like a Stelvio mm -hmm. or a Macan. But I heard the Stelvio has horrible reliability and the Macan is very expensive. What would you suggest for under $45,000 pre-owned? Now, just one thing I want to say about Alfa Romeo. You're right. If you take a look at the stats, they don't have a great reliability record. But every time we do an Alfa Romeo, whether it's the Stelvio or the Giulia, we have people chime in who say, I own one and I've never had an issue with it. So what I suggest you do is go and look at our videos. You just go to the search bar and type in, you know, Stelvio or uh, Julia, and then yeah. our videos will pop up. And then you can read all the comments and there's lots of them on there. We even said in the last video we had, well, everyone's going to say, oh, they're terrible. They're not reliable. And then about three days later, everybody that owns one will chime in and people love them. And I, I, every time I drive one, I love, I love it. Same here. I, I just can't believe how many people do chime in and say they've had no issues and love it. And the same thing will happen right now. Okay, the problem is a C, you want to get a CPO, certified pre-owned, yes. so you want that warranty extended. The other one I would look at is if you're looking for something fun to drive, and there's loads of them around, and you can get them CPO'd would be the BMW X3. The issue right now is that there's low inventory, even for used vehicles, so be careful what you're paying for them. Um, you don't want to overpay. Be careful with that. Just bought a 2023 Highlander XLE. Mm -hmm. The volume control on my screen is on the driver's side, not the passenger's like it used to be. Is it different in Canada? I'm in the U.S. I think it depends on the screen you get because the does. one that we just did the video on was the larger screen, which has the volume knob by the passenger. Yeah, so the smaller screen, which the XLE model has, it has the volume knob on the left-hand side, which is where close it should to the be. driver. Where it yeah. should be, yeah. But not on the larger screen anymore. It's way over on the right. I and, can barely reach it. Well, the other thing in Canada, we drive on the other side of the road. <laughs> we don't. Don't oh, but only, cause trouble. But only, only in the winter months. In oh the summer, we gosh. switch to the other side. Ignore him. Ignore <laughs> him. You're just going to cause trouble. There's lots of people have never been here. I no. want to warn them, Andrea. No. Awesome channel, and thanks for all the great videos. Thank you so much. Got an opportunity to consider a 2020 Lexus RX 450h. How would you compare the engine and technology to the new RX 350h? 
So what year are X4? 2020. Oh, it's like night and day. Night and day. Man, that thing was pokey to drive, wasn't yeah. it? No, it no. Was, oh, oh, go it, ahead. It, it yeah. was good fuel economy, but boy, could you get any more boring? Totally. And also, you will be surprised that the heated seats on the older RX barely heat up. They are lukewarm as well. The heated steering wheel is not heated all the way through. But that 2020 model gets you a CD player. Is that worth it? <laughs> no. And, well, you need the CD player to turn up the radio because the thing is so damn loud. That's we the didn't other enjoy thing. it. I would, I, if you really want, I would get the newer get one the if newer you had one. the budget for yes, it. Technology is not great. No. Has Toyota given you a sneak peek to the next Forerunner? Can't say anything. Next question. <laughs> no, we haven't had a no. sneak peek. We but we haven't. are going to an event. We're going to. But an we don't know what it is. No, so but we're, we're going, guessing what it might be. So we're going to an unveiling at the end of July, beginning of August, in Salt Lake City. In the mountains. Okay, so we just went and we saw the GX from Lexus, right? Yes. So that's the, the body-on-frame SUV. I think it's going to be the Land Cruiser. Well, I think it's going to be the Land Cruiser because Toyota Canada and USA on Instagram is showing things like kind of like a little sneak peek about the Land Cruiser. So initially I was thinking maybe this unveiling would be the Forerunner, but now I'm I'm not. Well, the other thing is like we're thinking, could it be the electric FJ Cruiser? I don't know. We're going to find know. out when we get there. But do you remember before the unveiling of the Toyota Tacoma, they were doing the same thing on Instagram for those who are on Instagram. And they gave these little sneak peeks about the Tacoma. Now they're doing it with the Land Cruiser. So uh, that's my bet. Yeah. I'm looking to get a PHEV this year and the Volvo XC60 Recharge and the BMW X550e are on the top of my list. What are your thoughts on these two options and which would you recommend? Just so you know, in Canada, they just say BMW X5 PHEV. In the U.S. on the website, it does say the 50E, but mm -hmm. they're the same vehicle, same, same vehicle. horsepower, same range. Well, I'm, I'm a bigger fan of the X5, which is, in, and this is the, this isn't a class bigger, right? So yeah. that's the other thing is you're comparing a compact Volvo versus a midsize BMW. And the BMW already at the basis is probably the best vehicle in that category, even including vehicles like the Cayenne. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be the one I get, but I don't remember what the range is off the top of my head. Yeah, the range are, uh, the BMW offers a little bit more range and than the the Volvo, but not a lot. And the BMW offers more horsepower, but not a lot. What you are going to find the difference is, and I don't know what your budget is. Maybe you don't have it. You're just trying to pick a vehicle that best suits your needs. The BMW is more expensive than it's the a better vehicle, Volvo. Though, but it's a class bigger. And I also find that the X5 is more engaging. The Volvo XC60 Recharge. thing about Volvo, which some people absolutely love, is that it gives you that super smooth and refined Floaty. drive. Oh, yeah. and one other thing about the BMW is the fact that in recent years, even Consumer Reports mm -hmm. has chosen it as one of its uh, top picks for reliability. So take that to the bank. My wife would like a small electric SUV to replace her 2014 Honda Accord. Ooh, what a good car. We have narrowed our choice down to two options. Which one would you choose between the VW ID4 dual motor with statement package, so that's your fully loaded one, or the Genesis GV60? What would you pick? You didn't really like the look of the GV60. The GV60 to me is just fugly. I don't know why they have to make the cars look so weird. <laughs> I, I, I like the ID because it just is a conventional SUV shape and layout and it works. Uh, the touch sensitive screen is not my favorite, but you know what? I think it's just more practical. I prefer the GV60 because of the interior. And it's, it's just fast as hell. Yeah, yeah, and it's absolutely gorgeous inside. Like I really feel like I'm getting an upscale experience when I'm sitting in one. Not so much with the ID4. Lots of plastic in it, you know, similar to the Q4. It's all about the shape. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really what you like. I'm looking at an all-wheel drive Corolla for my 16-year-old since I live near Chicago. Is the all-wheel drive worth it in these compact sedans? 
Well, you don't have to. You could get away with just doing a real good set of winter tires. And you know, in Chicagoland, it gets snowy and icy mm -hmm. and very, very cold. So what you have is just a little electric motor at the back. It's not a mechanical all-wheel drive like you would get with, like, say, a RAV4. Yeah. It's just a little electric motor at the back that's going to give you some assist. Could you live without it? You could. I think so, with a good set of winter tires, but you've got to be committed to putting those on. Well, even with the... Even with the all-wheel drive one, you, you have really to put them you on. should have good winter yes. tires. So the good thing about Chicago, it's flat. You're not dealing with hills and things, right? You know, our son, he drives a Honda Civic, and we put good all, winter tires. All weather tires. All weather yeah, tires. Yeah, we, we put them on. I think last year he would prefer that we switched out, actually put winter tires on. Because it's front-wheel drive and a young driver, he just feels more confident with winter tires uh but he's been fine with front wheel drive and we have quite a few hills in got vancouver lot, we got lots of hills here first time purchasing and i've always had my heart set on a wrangler mm -hmm. thoughts on the wrangler as an everyday vehicle and i'm well past college university age i like the wrangler a lot uh as a daily driver you'll find when you're on the highway that it seems to wander <laughs> that's a good word wander um, I'm not sure that I love that, if that was my only vehicle. And as well, it's missing some things like a power tailgate, for example. You're going to pull out the tailgate, and it's all manual. And the door is quite heavy, but, you know, maybe it's something you would get used to. Yeah, so it doesn't have all the creature comforts because no. it's a Jeep, right? They have to have the ability to take the doors off, the roof off, the tailgate is heavy, there's no power operated. No. And then you've got a solid axle in the front, and that's when you get, the, especially the bigger wheels and tires, it catches the ruts in the road, and you got to kind of manhandle it on some roads. Now, it really depends on the tires because we had the Rubicon, and then we had okay. the Sahara, yeah, I think it Sahara, was. Yeah, Sahara, And it had the um, more of of our conventional all season type tire and it was like night and day so Better. if you're not wanting to fight with it all the time maybe look at that model and i think it's i think it's fun to own but i wouldn't want one i like driving them when we get them for a week but i don't mm -hmm. want one uh one vehicle that's similar to that is the ford bronco yeah. it doesn't wander on the highway like that it's really suspension. impressive mm -hmm. so that might be one to consider if you're interested and it looks super cool as well Love your reviews. Always professional and entertaining. Thank you so much. Do you think the manufacturers listen to reviewers like yourselves to make mid-cycle updates? Well, we'd like to think they do. Uh, we pestered Toyota about putting something on the passenger side, whether it's manual height adjustment or a power height adjustment for the RAV4, and they did listen. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the thing, it depends on the brand. The Koreans absolutely listen to what we say. They're yeah. very sensitive to criticism and they take it to heart and they make changes. I was on a launch of the Vera Cruz. You might not remember what that is. It was a Hyundai uh, sort of midsize SUV called the Vera Cruz. And they had the engineers from uh, Korea there. And they, you know, they always say, oh, how do you like my car? And I'm like, oh, there, oh, there's a little sharp thing behind here. No, it's on the phone. They're calling <laughs> Korea. I mean, like, they, they're, like, it's fixed the next day. And uh, they're relentless with that. And that's why they're continuing to grow so fast. I also think Mercedes-Benz is pretty good. They mm -hmm. watch the reviews. They've told us. And they really mm -hmm. listen to the criticism as well and I think it would be a good idea because we are in touch with the consumers we're you know talking to you you're leaving comments and things like a bench seat on all trims in a three-row SUV would really benefit never, them to listen. We've never conquered that, that one yet. The only one that's ever done that Honda. is Honda. Honda. Way to go, Honda. What are your favorite and worst interior colors? How would I go first? Well, you know what I'm going to say. I know what he's going to say. So uh, a really great combo for me that I would love would be a navy exterior with a uh, ivory, let's say ivory interior. Mm -hmm. Like I would love that. One color that I do not like is in the Pacifica. They've done a caramel color and it looks orange. I hate it when they do a caramel color, but it looks orange instead of just like a rich saddle color that you get in the Alfa Romeo Giulia, oh, for example. Giulia is great. So my favorite is black. You know, it goes with everything. You put on some pearls, you're ready for evening wear. And it goes, it's like- So boring. I love it. Uh, so black's my favorite. And then um, my least favorite, it would be blue. Blue interior. 
Yeah, I don't what car like did we? Blue. We had a Volvo, and I was making <gasps> fun of the carpets, and I said it looks like Howard Johnson's carpet. No, because the carpets were orange, weren't they? Or were those no, they ones were blue. blue? Yeah, and they also, I think, do orange carpets, Volvo, or an orange. So I'm not a fan of blue interiors. I don't. I like a blue car. Like I, I think your combo. You know what car? That, your co color combo of dark blue with an ivory interior. You know who nails that the best? BMW. Range Rover. Yeah, Range. It's yeah, sexy. but you get a convertible BMW with that color combo. Combo and you've got the roof down Ugh, it looks just so gorgeous we will never have any other color in the interior except for black no that's not because true because that's what zach no that's wants. not true i it would is go with so no, true I, if i had an alfa romeo and i like alfa romeo i would get that brown interior i think that looked really hot with the green exterior yeah that's i would get it exactly the way we had really it. with the green exterior you should we call them and order one yeah i don't think we need to order it. an alfa romeo i think you can just go down and pick one up I I won. <laughs> you might even be able to get a 2022. Maybe. I, I won only one time. I got a black exterior vehicle. Like I won. I just said, Zach, please. And I said to please. Andrea. I said to Andrea. It was our last. It was our Audi A, A7. And I said to Andrea, really, are you going to do this to me? A black car? I said, it's clean it. for five minutes. Yeah. And then it gets dirty. And I hate it. So here's the thing about that decision. I, I did get my way, but boy... Did I ever hear a lot of complaints? I didn't hear a lot of complaints. A I'm, lot I'm of complaints. washing the car. See, Andrea, anyway. Andrea, I just, I just washed this yesterday. See it? Be honest. That drove you crazy. I can't. So stand... we don't have we. I will never get a black car. Yeah, again. I don't. I don't want another black car. But we've had too many black cars. They're a nightmare to keep clean. Yeah, we're tough. getting a bright yellow car. Which will Pomelo look, yellow. Which will look nice in, when it's dirty. <laughs> yeah, I think. And then the Cayenne that we're in right now is, is white. white. And I've never in my life wanted a white car. No. I always thought, who buys white cars? And now we own a white car. I'm like, I kind of like white cars. Yeah. White is kind of the new silver. Remember when silver was everywhere? Or the gray? 90s. It was 90s. Yeah. And now white is everywhere. What do they call the German rainbow? It's black, gray, and white That's for their they cars. Said. The Ger we were on a Porsche event and they said, what colors does it come in? And they said, oh, the German rainbow black gray and white <laughs> that's all they like really like this section of your channel especially when you guys talked about the gti and the targa well that was last week for questions well, if you Talking haven't watched cars. it go and watch it after you're done uh what is the difference between quality of materials in the lexus tx and grand highlander i'm sure there'll be a ride quality difference with noise vibration and harshness but did the touch and feel seem like a signing upgrade no I tx don't... grand highlander well i think that the grand highlander is so well done that i i w i haven't driven the other one yet i i want to drive it to see how it feels but i would stick grand highlander yeah and i think lexus for sure not i think i know they are more refined than Toyota, 100%. You're going to find that the cabin is quieter. Like Zach said, we haven't driven the TX yet. Zach doesn't feel that there's much of an upgrade. I did feel like the TX is more upscale than the Grand Highlander. But the thing is, they look the same. The layout is the same. What you'll find on the TX is the base model also comes with the Lexus shifter, that smaller shifter, whereas the Grand Highlander on the lower trims comes with kind of a larger shifter. Looks kind of like something that should be in a truck, but the top hybrid max trim comes with that smaller shifter. So I guess it really depends what you like. Also different color options. Like you get more color options in the TX than you do in the Grand Highlander for the interior. Just get the fully loaded Grand Highlander. So what did I do. say last week? I said, get the Grand Highlander and get yourself something fun to drive. And I said a bus pass. And I said, why a bus pass? Because you want to live on the edge, Andrea. I don't want a bus pass. I have a bus pass actually. Yeah, that's when we how go we get to the, to the airport. airport always and it's great but i would rather have something fun than a bus pass myself and i'm sure you would agree. a unicycle no i don't want a <laughs> unicycle either anyway that is it all of our questions for this questions coffee and cars follow along at motormouth underscore andrea on instagram put a post out every sunday get your questions in it's only up for a short time all right we'll see you next time have a great week